Good evening, aviators and aspiring TBM pilots. This is Quentin J. Parker, your pilot. Outside the TBM 900, and I would like to demonstrate a streamlined startup procedure for it. It is amended from the provided hot start procedures and the real world procedures outlined in the here TBM 900 pilot's operating handbook. So, what we're going to do first is the pre-flight. We're just going to remove all of the exterior sensor and instrumentation covers, as well as the chocks. Now, the chocks can be removed one of three ways. You can click on them directly in the exterior view. You can come over to the left-hand menu. If the chocks are highlighted in green, they're engaged. Simply click on them to take them off. Other than that, like everything else that we're going to remove, you got to go straight to the payload section. When you remove something off this plane's diagram, it does it in pairs. So, if you remove this right side static wick cover, the left side one is removed as well. Let's remove the pedo cover. And as I said before, we can remove the chocks here as well. And now we can remove the ties and caps from the propeller. And we can remove the fuselage static port covers. All right. Pre-flight is complete. I'm deeming this aircraft airworthy. So we are now going to start our pre-start. And we're going to move from lower right across the dash and up top. So circuit breakers. Going to check to make sure that they're nice and flush. Emergency ram air. Going to ensure that it's pushed all the way in. The same thing with the alternate static control. Going to make sure that the dump button is guarded. The pressure mode is set to automatic. That both bleed and air conditioning are in the off and down position. On the front of the pedestal is the fuel tank selector. Uh, you can, we're just going to make sure that it's either on right or left. Make sure flaps are up. Make sure the throttle is in the idle cutoff position. Make sure that the manual override lever is fully back towards you. Okay. Make sure that the landing gear lever is down. The parking brake can only be set if you press and hold the wheel brakes and then twist this parking brake knob from off to on. If you simply turn the knob without engaging the wheel brakes, parking brake is not set. From there I'm going to make sure that all the switches on the de-icing system are down and off. I'm going to come up and make sure that the micro max switch is set to micro and guarded. There we go. To the overhead. And just make sure that all of my switches are in the down and off position with the exception of ignition. Ignition can be up in auto. Everything else is down. The pre-start is complete. So now we're going to start up the engine. Raised crash bar. Set the generator to main and the source to battery. Unless uh, it's starting on the ground power unit and then you set the source to GPU. But we're not doing that. Now I set the generator to main. 
which means the middle display came up. To get out of this splash screen on the middle display, come down to this rightmost soft key and press enter. Now, over there is a display backup. Press display backup, you'll get all your engine and electrical information on the pilot's PFD. This is necessary if you don't set source to main, which will only bring up the pilot's PFD. Regardless, when you're starting on a battery, you want to verify that you're generating a minimum of 24 and a half volts. If, however, you're starting on the ground power unit, 28 volts. Over at CAS Messages, you want to review for parking brake, fuel pressure, oil pressure, vacuum pressure, low voltage, automatic fuel selection, and maybe, if your door is open, door, or if you're on ground power unit, GPU door. Okay, we're going to come back up to the overhead and we are going to turn on the strobe light and either the pulse lights during the day, the landing light at night. Move the auxiliary boost pump switch to on. Alright, it's showtime. We're ready to start the plane. We are going to verify that the area around the plane is clear, especially behind us, as the PT6 exhaust tends to kick up any debris that's behind it. So, I'm going to bring up the display for easy reading. Come up and press the starter for two seconds. One, two. Okay. We're looking for the starter and ignition messages under the cast messages. We're looking for at least 13% NG and that the ITT is no hotter than 150 degrees Celsius within the first 20 seconds. Okay, having met those parameters, we can move the throttle on the low idle. ITT is still rising within 10 seconds. NG has to exceed 30% within 30 seconds. Around 52% NG is when messages start clearing from the CAS window, particularly starter and ignition. There we go. If you're starting on external power, Now's the time when you switch your source to battery and have the power cart removed. Advance the throttle into taxi range, passing through flight idle. Come over to the, the ISO section, raise the inertia separator. Up at the top right of the overhead, we're going to move the auxiliary boost pump and fuel selector both to auto and the AP trim switch to on. Come back down to the de-icing section and we're going to raise our heater switches 
to on. Pilot left, pilot right, and stall. And lastly, we're going to come over to the environmental control system and move both our bleed and air conditioning switches to full auto. All right, engine should be humming like a top, but as it's a PT6, it is very loud. So you should only have three cautions listed under cast messages parking brake, inertial separator, and if your door is open, which mine is, door. Close the door and that will leave parking brake and inertial separator. So you're now ready to configure for your flight and go about your business. I'm a big stickler for following checklists. And because checklists are written in blood, I feel a little weird about amending this startup procedure, but it works for me and I hope it works for you. This has been Quentin J. Parker, your pilot, starting the TBM 900 for your flying pleasure. I'm out. Be safe guys, cheers.